Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I'm doing well. Didn't um drinking a diet coke right now. Please don't write into me about my diet coke and how it's just so bad. I drink one diet drink a day. I'm a diabetic. It's the only thing I got. Please leave me alone about it. Um, and and it's actually not always diet coke. Just today I happen to be drinking a diet coke. So I'm going to talk about placeholding and being a placeholder and what that means and why it's not a good thing and why you should watch out for people making you a placeholder. Now, as you know, I talk some stuff about black women, a little bit about dating and a little bit about dating interracially. And I try to tell the truth. I don't try to tell pretty lies. I try to tell the truth of what it really means having dated um, interracially over 20 years. I try to tell the truth of what it means to date interracially and how you can sort of duck and dodge some of the pitfalls that I had. Because the stuff that I tell you is not stuff that I just sort of came out the air. It's stuff that's usually happened to me and experiences that I've had. So I try to set out a nice warning for people and stuff so you don't get too caught up because uh, it's easy to get caught up especially if you find somebody and you think that you have some love of your life or something or you've been lonely for a while or whatever you know and you find somebody and you think it's great or whatever and you meet somebody online or real life or you know Facebook or whatever you know folks are doing now um, and you find somebody and you just think it's awesome and you um, start talking and everything and then you're trying to figure out whether your relationship is moving along or, or whatever. Now, lots of men will make women a placeholder, and I've known a placeholder women and stuff. Um, it's not pretty. Usually it's sort of sad. Have I ever been a placeholder? No, I've never been a placeholder. Um, because once I start seeing actions that don't match up with words or what it is that I'm needing, then I'm on my way and stuff. Uh, but placeholder is something that if you let a guy do it, um, he'll do it, you know, and stuff. And, and usually what happens when it comes to a woman being a placeholder, it actually means you're holding a place for somebody else, uh, is the guy's not really interested, but he wants sex, um, you know, sort of really easily and stuff and, and placeholders kind of fit that bill. Uh, you know, um, she may be taking him out and buying him gifts and doing stuff to try to draw him into her. And he's still not really interested. He doesn't, they don't really go out on dates, not unless she pays for him. They don't go to places, not unless she invites him and sort of, you know, sort of has to insist on him going. And so the other day I was watching Dr. Phil and I was watching about a young woman who was sort of obsessed with her ex-boyfriend, and they had broken up. It must have been, they were talking maybe a few months ago, end of last year, they had broken up and stuff, and she had started stalking him, and she had, she had readily admitted she had been stalking him, you know, writing a thousand text messages a day, driving by his house, driving by his work, and stuff, calling him all day, and he had, she, had, he had, she had blocked like 60 phone numbers from her and all this stuff. But the really weird part was that, they had broken up, and they had been together maybe 18 months and had broken up a bunch of times in between that. Now, here's a warning. If you break up and get back with somebody, yeah, yeah it's, in all likelihood, it's not going to change. It's not going to be a better relationship. There's a reason you broke up in the first place. Why go back and forth on, you know, and stuff? And I've known people like that, too. We have these relationships where they go back and forth and break up and give it. Yeah, that's just drama. You know, once we're dropped, once you're dropped, I'm gone. It, we won't be getting back together. Um, I did that once. I actually did that once, and that was a disaster and stuff. So, so she had, they had broken up, but this time he had said he was done with her forever. But in the meantime, he's she's writing these thousand text messages a day and all this stuff and stalking him and calling him and doing all this stuff to obviously show he's not interested but in the meantime every once in a while she'll call and he'll go out with her and they'll have sex 
And I thought to myself, well, you know, you kind of can't blame her. And for women who are having this happen, or if you're a man that's doing this, listen, if you get your feelings hurt, woman, because you, every time he calls, y'all been broke up, and, you know, he's really acting not interested, but every time he calls and wants to hook up for a little booty call, you're more than happy to do it. And if you're doing that to women, and you're wondering why some chick is stalking you and crazy, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure why you're wondering. You know, you're giving her hope and stuff. And you're getting hope from him doing that. Placeholders will usually do that sort of thing where they'll not speak to the woman for a while and, you know, really diss her, you know, not really be concerned, don't return calls, don't do anything, you know, and stuff. And then all of a sudden somebody's horny and decides they're going to call and the woman thinks, oh, this is my chance. And so she comes and she sexes them down. And then, you know, he throws her out, you know, later on during the night and she has to go home and she's thinking, oh, yeah, well, we're going to be together, you know, and stuff. Um, you're not going to be together. Uh, once again, you know, and I, I know a lot of women want to think men are these really noble creatures and all this sort of stuff. And they'll be really, yeah, once again, men will screw anything that will screw them and stuff. And even if you have a guy now, somebody you're dating, you think, oh, my guy would have never done that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's He's probably done it. When dudes are in a relationship, they can certainly be noble. Outside of relationships, sometimes nobility goes the way of the dodo. Um and they just turn into men that have to get the needs met and stuff. And they will maybe use somebody to get those needs met. What happens as a placeholder is you will have that sort of thing where he just comes around and he was just so, he was, you know, he was just so hurt. I really loved her. But, you know, now all of a sudden the guy on the Dr. Phil show, he had a girlfriend. So he hadn't been calling her. And I was just thinking, wow, she didn't even know she's been a placeholder while he's trying to find the girl of his dreams, you know, and stuff. And he would tell her he loved her and stuff. And placeholders will do that. They'll tell you that they love you and how much they want you and all this sort of stuff. Placeholders will, men who make women placeholders will do that. They will tell you that because they want to keep you in. You know, they want to keep you kind of tied to them, but a little a distance away so they don't have to really be bothered. Know that if, and, and the thing is about being a placeholder, now this was just a few months, that, a span that this happened to this young lady on Dr. Phil, but know that sometimes men will placehold you for a long time. Um, they'll do it sometimes for years and stuff. And if you're two, three, four years, you don't really go out on dates unless, of course, you pay for them. You don't go on trips unless, of course, you pay for them. He doesn't invite you to any sort of big events in his life. If he has some event, if he's graduating from school, if his parents come to town or family comes to town, if he's got a birthday or a special occasion, and, and you never are there, okay, and stuff. And when you invite him to stuff, he never comes, okay. You're probably, and he's calling you late at night or when he's bored or on, the, on, on Wednesday, but Saturday night after he's gone out with his boys or something like that, you know, and just saying, well, would you come over and all this stuff, you know, or he wants to come to your house. You never go to his or when you go to his, he doesn't really want to go anywhere. He doesn't really want to do anything. You know, people want to sit and eat pizza and watch TV. And then the next thing you know, it's maybe on. Then you're probably on placeholder for another woman. Some people just don't want to be without a easy piece, as the, the best as I can say it, um, you know, and stuff, something that doesn't take a lot of effort, you know. And, you know, the guy is a loser and a user and an abuser and stuff, but you cannot not take your part in this because, see, I'm not a person that puts – stuff on one person. I know people like to do that. Oh, it's all her fault. Oh, it's all his fault. No, 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 no. There's always enough blame to go around for this. Now, he shouldn't be doing what he's doing, but you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, too. 
you shouldn't be accepting this sort of status as placeholder. It's obvious he doesn't want to be bothered with you. There's nothing he's doing. Once again, you can't really go by what he's saying. There's nothing in his actions that's telling you, I want to be with you, you know, and stuff. Um, and that's really what matters. He's not doing anything to let you know that. And believe me, after three years of you doing all that, he won't do it. Why? Because he's getting what he wants without really having to pay for it. I mean, why wouldn't you? If you let me use you, why wouldn't I use you? If people are thinking, why wouldn't you use anybody that? Yeah, whatever. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't somebody, if you let me take advantage of you, why wouldn't I take advantage of you? It would take a, it would take, um, you know, it takes a person with some kind of moral compass to say, I won't take advantage of people. But, you know, for many people, really, that's how it is. If you let me take advantage of you, I'll take advantage of you, you know, and stuff. And so this is, this certainly happens. And I've seen and heard of it happening amongst black women and, you know, the, other brother, rainbow men, white men, whatever you want to call it, in the world of world dating, these dudes are there. They're waiting for they're waiting for this, you know, goddess of their dreams, you know, and stuff. And I'm talking about he may be waiting for some white chick. He may be waiting for just some other black chick that he likes more than he likes you, and stuff. Um, but he's waiting for somebody else, and he just needs somebody to fill the place. In the meantime, don't end up getting caught up in the placeholder thing, you know. And once again, let me say it. You cannot go by people's words. You can only go by what people do, you know. I, I just, I never go by what people say. I only go by what people do. And when you don't do what you say you're going to do, that signals something to me. You know, um, if it's obvious that you really don't want to be bothered with me, you're not introducing me to friends or family, you don't, you know, when I say I, we, well, you know, when talking about going out or I have an event and say, would you like to come and you don't want to come, or especially if I'm paying for all the dates and all that stuff. Yeah, it's obvious to me that you're not really interested in a relationship. I mean... It's not hard to figure out, and yet it hurts them. Believe me, it hurts your ego. I, I just it does. Rejection hurts your ego, but getting out of the situation hurts less than staying in. Because believe me, I have known of women who have stayed in, who have stayed in this sort of situation for years, and that hurts because they're really attached to this person. You know, especially because they've been having continual sex with this person. Once again, ladies, women get attached via sex. Men don't, you know. And for all the women who are still confused, thinking, I'm having sex with him, and I'm thinking it's going to make him fall in love, and they're wondering why he's not falling in love, because men don't get attached like that, you know, and stuff. Women do. And so we're so caught up in all the brain chemicals and all the stuff that's going on biologically with our bodies, we think we're in love with a chump. You know, and stuff. And some dude who's okie doking us, you know, and stuff. And so it's best that you stay out of those. But usually it's some kind of physical, usually in the placeholder, there's always physical contact. There's always a physical component. You know, um, you're not placeholding and he's not getting sex. He's getting sex too. While you're placeholding. And that's really all that you're all there. I know it hurts. If you've had this happen or if it's happening to you now, I know it hurts to hear about it. But listen, I'd rather tell you the ugly truth than tell you some pretty lie and stuff. I'd rather tell you what this really is than not what it is where you end up, you know, you're on Dr. Field talking about how obsessed and you're stalking somebody all the time and sending them text messages and calling them all day and, and driving by the house you know, and stuff. It's just, you know, it's real easy to become a stalker, especially if you come from a background where you have been abandoned by a parent, because particularly the young woman that was on Dr. Phil, her issue wasn't really him, her thinking she needed him. Her issue was she had been abandoned by both of her parents as a child, and so she had abandonment issues, 
and stuff. So if you are a person that has been abandoned by a parent or both parents or one parent or whatever, especially a father, then you may have some issues with maybe becoming a placeholder. Maybe thinking that you can have you can have some man become attached to you and stuff. Now, you don't have to have that to, to end up being a placeholder, but certainly that can be a component of it and stuff. So, you know, you can't sit around waiting for somebody to fall in love with you after three or four years. If he's going to be in love with you, that would have happened early on you know, and stuff. If he really had some feelings for you, he would have treated you as if he had feelings for you. When it's obvious he doesn't, and he obviously treats you badly and poorly, you know, and stuff, and treats you sort of like, you know, old hag brag, then you know for sure that you're just sitting around place holding for the woman of his dream. And what is going to happen is when he finds the woman of his dreams, he's going to drop you like a bad habit. He's going to drop you so fast, your head is going to spin. He is not going to talk to you. He's not going to act like he knew you. He's not going to want you to come around. That is going to be a drop. That's going to be a drop like dropping off, off a cliff at the Grand Canyon. I mean, that's going to be that sort of drop. Um, and he won't explain. It won't be like, well, you know, it'll just be one day he's just out of here. He's gone. And you're wondering what happened and everything. And you're trying to pick up the pieces of your life. Once again, remember how vital time is. I know people seem to think that they could just waste a bunch of time and stuff. But I don't know. You have to remember how vital your time is. If you've done this for months or years, you can't get that time back. So if you were 30 and did this, or 28 and did this for five years until you're 33, you know, some time and, and other things have gone away. I mean, you know, we don't stay the same. I, I'm not the same as I was when I was 20. I don't look the same. I don't look the same. Because I'm, you know, now almost 41 years old. I don't look the same. Okay. And so time that is passed and stuff, I can't get back. I can't get my 20-year-old self back. My 20-year-old look exactly back, you know, and stuff. It'll never be that way, you know, and stuff. You get older. Um, you may get wrinkles. You may put on some weight. Things will happen and stuff, you know. And so you can't get that self back. You may not get the energy back, you know, and stuff. Things, you know, and you've missed that time when you actually could have been out really maybe improving yourself, feeling better about yourself so you could draw someone to you that was really worth something instead of being a placeholder for some other woman who now is happy and I'm telling you he's noble with her although he's not noble with you you'll be noble with her and stuff and so you'll get the short end of the stick so you've lost time probably lost a bunch of money and stuff you know wasting it on the chump so really think about where it is that you are when you go into the relationship what what where is he trying to put you you know where what's happening you know because you have some say in what's going on you don't have to be the placeholder you don't have to accept whatever it is he's throwing out you know and stuff um you don't have to be that you can walk away and leave him to do whatever it is he's going to do but you you're going to have to do that and stuff uh, it's not, it's not, it's not worth your, your time, your pride, self-esteem, um, you know, all the stuff, money to, to waste that kind of time on someone that is unworthy of you and stuff. And, um, you know, it's not like he's going to tell you he's going to make you a placeholder. He's just going to do it. And then you're going to look around and see, okay, well, this is not exactly working out. And stuff. So you have to kind of be on alert 
And, you know, I know as black women, we will keep hope alive, you know, and stuff. But, you know, it, it doesn't take long for you to figure out whether somebody is, is okie doke or not. It, it doesn't take long. You know, it's not it's not brain surgery, ladies. You can do it pretty fast and stuff. So my hope is that if you are in this sort of thing, that you don't end up in it again. And if you're in it now, that you remove yourself from the situation so you can actually find someone, um, you know, and, and hopefully kind of get yourself together. You know, maybe read some books, get some therapy and get yourself together. And then you can find someone that's actually worthy of you and your time. Okay, so I will talk to everyone later. Bye-bye.